Today, I'm riding this overnight sleeper train for 13 hours through the jungle, starting in the Golden Triangle, winding all the way down to Bangkok. I'd booked a first-class cabin, which features a bed, seating area, and access to a shower. I'll also show you the other classes of travel, the um, catering, and of course, the beautiful Thai jungles, as we trundle our way some 500 miles south. Oh, and I'd just like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. So let's begin our journey, late afternoon, way up in Northern Thailand. Hello there and welcome back to the channel. You join me today in sunny Thailand. I'm currently in the old town of Chiang Mai, but I need to go and get over to the train station to catch this epic journey. So without any more to say, let's go grab a tuk-tuk and get over to the train station. Chiang Mai Railway Station is a couple of miles east of the old town on the other side of the Ping River. My tuk-tuk ride cost around $4, including tip. Okay, thank, there you. Go. thank you so much, my friend. Right then, here we are, Chiang Mai Station. I am gonna quickly nip into the 7-Eleven across the road here to get a few supplies. So, you're not allowed to bring beer on board. You're not allowed to buy beer on board. It leaves me one option. Let's hope no one searches my bags. Originally opened in 1922 and subsequently rebuilt in 1945, Chiang Mai Station is the Northern Rail Gateway to the Thai capital, largely operated by the state-run railway. And I say largely because there is an exception here, the Eastern and Oriental Express. And yeah, before you ask, it's on the list. So with no need to purchase tickets today, as I've done so already online, full details and price coming in just a second. Let's hot foot it to platform four for the 6 p.m. Special Express, featuring the brand new second and first class carriages. We're gonna have a look at absolutely everything on this train today. So you'll be seeing all the different types of accommodation. We've got to continue up here, right to the very front to car. I'm not actually sure which car it is, but basically first class. Despite being a very long train today, there is just one first class carriage attached right at the front. And this is why I suggest booking well in advance if you want to secure this cabin. Well, fancy seeing you in here. Welcome to my new cabin. I've just been told that unfortunately there's no food on the train, which is a slight concern, given I've just got beer and water. So I'm just starting to cool down, thankfully. The air conditioning is on full blast. And you never guess what, hang on. I love that, national anthem being played before departing. Can you imagine if we had that on Amtrak in the US or on National Rail in the UK? Personally, I think it's a lovely tradition, though in Thailand, it's very much the norm. With that, we're well and truly on our way. 13 hours to go. So what's the setup today? In first, there are 24 sleeping berths available and you'll need to book two of these to have the cabin to yourself if you're traveling alone. I'm in the second cabin along, which in hindsight is a fair old walk to the loose, so I'd suggest being a little closer. Before we take a look around my room, let's go and explore the rest of the train. Ordinarily, I'd be heading straight to the dining car, but as I mentioned, it's not been attached today. I walk through no less than eight second-class carriages of varying occupancy. I start to wonder why this is the case, but I can only guess the pandemic is very much to blame here. These trains would usually be absolutely packed with tourists. As we head deeper into the jungles surrounding Chiang Mai, let's take a proper look at second class then. With berths either side consisting of upper and lower bunks, there are a total of 40 in each carriage. In the flesh, you can see it looks really exposed, but as you'll see in a moment, there are actually curtains which go across providing some privacy. The seat itself is comfy with a fold-out table and some stowage space, although most notable I couldn't find a power outlet, which in this day and age would certainly be an issue. With dusk fast approaching and no makeshift dining car in sight, let's make our way back through the train to take a proper look at my first cabin. So what do you get 
get in the first class sleeper. Well, let's take a look around. First of all, I must say, I'm loving the purple. The first thing you need to know is that this cabin here is actually something that you need to book exclusively. And when I say that, if I had not reserved two seats in this specific cabin, I'd be sharing with someone else. There is a connecting door, first of all, so it would allow you to share if you were traveling as say two couples or a family. Unfortunately, the train got quite noisy here, so I'll voice this part over. Not only do you have a table by your window, you also have a fold down one in the middle of your purple seating. There is provided water, thankfully, as water is of course not drinkable out of the taps. As for the rest of the space, it's well utilized with a sink in the far corner and bedding stacked up ready for sleep in a moment. Yes, that is a TV screen, which provides an update of your route along with next station timings and an overall ETA. There's a further control panel with USB charger and a power outlet with attached reading light in the corner. Most importantly for me, there's good air conditioning, which is adjustable by pulling the lever for high, medium or low air flow. All in all, a solid sleeper cabin, but we'll have to see what this is like when it's converted into a bed. Just before we do this and I get to show you the onboard shower, it's time for a quick word from today's video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace make it super easy for you to set up and host a website. And no, you don't have to know complicated coding. Squarespace really have this down, handling it all from your domain name through to the design, hosting, social media linking, and even your search engine optimization. The best bit is Squarespace Squarespace offering you a free trial and 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Just head over to squarespace.com forward slash track trendy and use the coupon code track trendy. Thanks again Squarespace for making this video possible. As the last bit of light fades from the skies, it's time to go check out the first class loo and get myself ready for sleep. There's a urinal and two standard toilet cubicles at the front of the carriage. These weren't the cleanest and smell a bit if I'm honest, but they did the job. I mean, it's a far cry from the more rustic loo seen on the older trains with literally a hole in the ground. I mean, this even has luxuries such as the bidet feature. Now we head back down to my cabin, where my cabin attendant is making my bed up for me. A shallow mattress goes directly onto the seat, and it's followed by a sheet and two pillows. You get blankets provided separately to go over the top, and shield you from that ice cold air conditioning. In contrast, here's what it's like when both bunks are made up, and worry not, I will be trying out the top bunk in the morning for bonus hilarity at my expense. Before I get ready for bed, I feel like I should probably crack open the illicit beer that I've smuggled on board, which is even more fitting now I don't have any dinner, so it's a liquid dinner for me. Here we go, still cold as well. Not wanting a Chang over, it's probably good I only smuggled one on board. Something really marries up though, being able to enjoy an ice cold beer and a long rail journey, it's definitely worth it. With that, no dinner, but just a beer, I think it's time to go and get some sleep. So of course I wasn't expecting PJs to be provided, though I have been told these are available on Japanese trains. Spoiler, coming soon. Nevertheless, I've brought my own today. Of course, it can't be a TT video without featuring NASA. Mind you, this and a change of underwear is pretty much all I've been able to bring today. The challenge of being a vlogger. Let's get my teeth brushed then and into bed. No Tims to boot off this evening, but still I have to boot off something. It's tradition. Let's draw those curtains and settle into bed. I wouldn't say it's the comfiest. Caledonian, you win this one, but it's fine for a night. I'll see you lot in the morning then for, yeah, a shower. Night. The next day. Well, good morning. Still half asleep, let's make the most of being up at this ungodly hour and try out the shower. Towels and soap are provided, but don't do a me and have to double back and grab them, as for some reason I assumed they'd be waiting in the shower. Amtrak has really spoilt me. The shower room is, well, basic. It's a little unkept, given how new the train is, but this isn't an expensive product, so let's roll with it. Well, here we go then. Now I definitely want to wear shower shoes today, but I don't have any, so I'll fashion the plastic covering which the towel came in into a sort of sanitised stepping stone. Another thing I've just realised is there's nowhere to keep your shoes, so I'll pop these outside the door and hope no one makes off with them. So the shower. 
is actually really good and I'm impressed. Being electric, it's got decent power and I enjoyed a lovely warm shower on my little plastic island. After a particularly challenging change back into my clothing, let's head back over to my room. Now it's time to swap back into my polo and as I glance out of the window, I find the sun beginning to come up. Out of all my rail journeys, this is always the most magical part, the sunrise, as you hurtle ever closer to your destination. With this in mind, and as we begin to pass through more built up areas, my cabin attendant comes to put my bed away. Whilst she's doing this, I head to the front of the first carriage. Of course, we're right behind the locomotive, which I'm sure you'll agree offers quite a unique vantage point. Right, we still have one more thing to do. Oh, and by the way, I did make sure to tip my cabin attendant. I'm unsure of the expectation, but well, she was lovely. So it wouldn't be one of my videos without trying out the top bunk and the lever just here. Oh, well, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> not the most graceful as always. But um, but yeah, I uh, I don't know if there's supposed to be a ladder. It's actually surprisingly roomy up here. There's the same control panel you get below, plus of course the TV, which I still can't really work out. Anyway, with that said, I'm going to uh, attempt to get back down. And there we are, back in my original seat. As we head into the centre of Bangkok, I'm blown away by how closely integrated the train is into the surroundings. It seems to almost go through people's homes. Well, it's time to get off back to the heat of Bangkok City. That was quite the epic journey. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me today. And I guess it's a fitting end as well, ending in Bangkok Railway Station, which in fact has been around since I think 1916. It was due to close, but they've kept it open. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all again next week. Thanks once again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash trendy. Save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.